Hi folks, welcome! As you probably know, this isn't my first project about coffee machines. This was the first project ever on YouTube showing how to make a coffee machine using light bulbs. In this case, this project works with vacuum, so it's a suction working coffee machine. Today I have a completely different idea, and if it works, I'm going to put it on Kickstarter. I'm talking about a cavitation, cavitational coffee machine. It can also work with cold water, so it's very easy to use. But I want to explain you better how cavitation can be so handy and useful for this project. Cavitation, the word itself explains how it works. There's a cavity, I mean like vacuum over there, especially underwater. So imagine that I'm under the ocean with my head only sticking out the water and I want to catch a fish with my hand. If I move very rapidly the hand underwater, you can understand that an air bubble will form behind the hand while I'm moving it. That's not air, it's impossible. The hand is underwater, there's no air. What I'm seeing instead is cavitation. I mean, there's an air bubble that is made with vacuum and it follows my hand. But here's the, the interesting part. When I stop the hand very, very fast, at this precise moment, all the air that it was following, the vacuum that was following my hand, will implode. It's like an explosion, but opposite. And this is so powerful that can destroy and take away molecules from my hand. This is so powerful that it can also take molecules away from stainless steel <laughs> propellers or rudders and all the other mechanical parts of the boat. That's the reason why it's so important to design so precisely the hydrofoil shape of all the components. So we have less cavitation, this is more efficient, and uh, the most important thing is that the life of the propeller itself is longer. So we can use this principle of cavitation and destruction of cavitation to extract caffeine from the coffee. And it's so cool, I want to show you an experiment. So the explanation is very simple. Many people think that it's a pressure problem that destroyed the bottle. Instead, if you think about it, is all the water going up so quickly that it will form a vacuum on the bottom. This is cavitation. And it's so powerful that can implode the glass itself. And that's the reason why all the bottle breaks up. I've just ordered a new coffee machine, an espresso one. This will be the reference point to test the taste of the coffee if the prototype I'm building with cavitation really tastes good. So let's turn it on. Before building the final machine, I want to build myself a prototype just to test if it's possible to extract the taste from the coffee powder. I took apart this piston from an office chair, I cut it open because I need just the front part of it. This is great because it has a gasket inside, a very precise, precise movement, and the plan of today is to move it so rapidly that will create cavitation. Cavitation inside this plexiglass tube, which is transparent, so we can all see what's happening inside the water. So basically the idea is to move the piston so rapidly, like I'm doing right now, as quickly as possible. Because in this case we will create vacuum and cavitation inside the water. The mechanism is so simple, I want to install this spring that I took apart from an umbrella and make all the structure that will hold all the parts precisely parallel to each other. So two stainless steel rods are welded here on the side, something here on the bottom, and yeah, basically this is the prototype itself. We just have to take the plexiglass tube and stick it on top. I choose one that has the perfect dimension, but it's also a very good idea to add some glue, which is epoxy by, com by component glue, and I can glue it here on the bottom. 
Make sure don't use toxic glue and let the glue dry for about 5 minutes. Now we can add water, about 10 cc of water inside and then take some coffee powder and I will say the prototype is ready. To release the spring tension I will install this, that is a metal part with, with a stainless steel cable. Every time I pull it away the springs is free to go and the piston moves so quickly. So quickly that we can see that we are creating cavitation underwater, which is really what we need to extract the taste of the powder and it's amazing to see everything happening underwater with this transparent plexiglass tube. Wow, and this is finally working. This is the first prototype, but I can clearly see that I have cavitation inside. This implosion can be so powerful that if I think the right thing can be so powerful that can implode and destroy and extract all the taste of coffee and have the perfect dilution inside the water. So we need to make a science experiment. So we need a comparison a comparison test. And for this purpose, I mailed this. It is a just simple plexiglass tube, the same of this one, but this we have no cavitation. I just will stir the coffee powder inside cold water. And inside here, I will pour cold water, but make cavitation. Let me stir carefully this that will be the container that is just cold water with infusion powder and start the piston process. You can clearly see using these slow motion cameras that we are producing vacuum and this is also cavitation explosion happening inside the bottom of the container. You can see that all the powder get imploded every time there is a cavitation here on the bottom. Uh, with this perfect shot, which is very close up of what's happening, you can just imagine to be a coffee powder particle and being exposed to these high forces. You will probably release all you have inside of you. That's really what really happens. So all the coffee powder release the taste inside the water, even if it's cold water. And I just have to keep up doing this movement for about five minutes and checking that the color of the water change. The darker it gets, the, taste, the stronger the taste will be. So yeah, just be patient. So the color has changed, but I will continue for after other five minutes and see if this prototype can work and then we can build the, the definite machine. of all three coffees is so impressive. But now let's taste them all three. This is the espresso, it's still extremely hot and the taste is terrible. I didn't put sugar because I want to keep the original taste of all three samples. So this is the infusion one, it's terrible as well because it's cold, but it's very light taste. It seems like some cold tea. And now finally the cavitational coffee. The color is so dark and also the taste is pretty strong I will say it's stronger than the espresso as well. So yeah, I'm so happy because my idea really works. I can say for sure that cavitation can extract the taste from coffee powder. So this is a great thing. I can improve all the project, um, but I will say instead of building a new machine that uses this piston, let's change completely idea because this project takes so much time to make one single coffee and will create so much noise and is really unpractical. So I already know what to buy. A very small but very to use machine. So let me show you. We are talking about a ultrasonic cleaner machine. It is usually used by jewelry or dentists to clean very small items and it works by ultrasonic sound waves that travel inside water. We can take a very dirty object, throw it inside water and ultrasound will clean it for us. It basically works with the same principle of before. We are creating cavitation. 
I know it doesn't seem so because we cannot clearly see with our eyes. It is something we can see with the microscope and basically we are creating all small air bubbles all around the surface of the object we want to clean. Basically are steam bubbles with vacuum that will implode on the surface of the object and remove all the dirt. You can see that after a couple minutes this is the same gear and is much cleaner. So we can use this method, it really works. I can't wait to take it apart, never dismount an ultrasonic machine and now I already know what this circuit is for. It's the driver, it will create the perfect frequency of 33,000 Hz that is traveling through this speaker. Calling it speaker is the wrong word, is the wrong word. I will call it piezoelectric and it's directly glued to this stainless steel cup. Now I have to replace the cup with a coffee machine, an Italian one. Here in Italy we call it mocha and it's quite heavy, it's much heavier than the stainless steel cup and this can be a problem. The piezoelectric, so the speaker that will create the sound, was made to let this stainless steel cup resonate with it. It is a very lightweight cup compared to the coffee machine I want to use, it's much heavier. So let me show you what I mean when I tell you that it's too heavy. Imagine that I am the piezoelectric and this is the stainless steel cup. It's so lightweight that you can shake it very easy once we get the perfect frequency. Instead, if we switch the things and imagine I am the piezoelectric and this is the much heavier mocha, it's almost impossible to let it shake. Instead, I will shake instead of the mocha. So we need to solve this problem and I already know what to use, but yeah, first let's drink some more coffee. If the problem was that the mocha is too heavy, we can solve it this way. Put everything inside my lathe and remove the back side of the mocha, so the bottom. Now we need to insert something flexible so that the piezoelectric and the mocha doesn't really connect to each other strongly and can resonate without problems. I cut away the stainless steel cup and round the corners of this speaker and it's quite smaller than the hole we just made. This is made on purpose so that we can take a membrane, a silicone one, and glue it here on the bottom part of the mocha. Silicone goes all around and get glue to all parts, so to the mocha here and then to the piezoelectric as well once this is dry. So you can clearly imagine that the two parts are free to move it can resonate without problems. So finally the mocha is ready and I need to think about a method to hide the circuit. So the driver can go inside this little box I designed into Fusion 360 that will go here on the base of the mocha itself. I can 3D print all the parts I need and glue both of them so that the circuit is hidden inside. Mm. 
Okay, it's incredible because I could, ex I can extract the taste of coffee just using cavitation. And it's incredible because with the espresso, we use very hot water to extract the taste. Here is just cold coffee and the taste is pretty the same. So I'm pretty confident that this could be a product that could sell on Kickstarter. I just have to search if there's a patent on, on these kind of projects. Um, yeah, if you want to support my YouTube channel, you know how it works right here. So leave a comment or leave a thumbs up. Or if you enjoy tutorials, this is the channel about only tutorials about things I love in my life. So consider to subscribe, it's very appreciated. We are growing very fast, so thank you so much for, yeah, in the last month we grow so much. Yeah, I will stop drinking coffee for today because I drink too much. See you next week, ciao ciao.